Hey squad, welcome back. Now today I have something really special for those of you guys who record, engineer and produce vocals, whether it be sung vocals, rap vocals, narration, podcasts, whatever. As long as you're handling um, vocals within your recording setup, then this one is for you. Now, the techniques I'm going to show you right here, they don't just apply to Logic Pro X, although that's my main tool for doing my work. You can use the same techniques in any other door. Although some of the processes will be different, I'm sure you'll be able to find alternatives in the door of your choice. Okay, so I'm sure I've touched on DSing before in previous tutorials. However, today's lesson is taking it to that next level and showing you some advanced techniques that you probably wouldn't see in another tutorial. We're gonna be using Logic's DSer 2, but we're also gonna use another technique in addition to help reduce some of those sibilant consonants such as S's, T's and so on. Now I'm sure you'll find something in this video that will be of benefit to you, so let's get into it. Now the track I'm using to demonstrate this technique is a song I'm just about to release featuring Carmen J on vocals. So let me play you a section of the vocals that I'll be treating and this is before the DSing has been applied. <laughs> As always, do remember to support me on my musical journey at doosbeats.com and you'll find links to all of my content right there. Okay, so as you can see, these vocals have been bounced down as a stereo pair. Um, and on the channel strip, I've added a sample delay to add that extra width. You can find out more about using the sample delay in a video I've done previously. I've also added a tape delay. Now let's listen to the vocals in isolation. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me, tell me. We can always spend some time and the answer we will find, you can always tell me. You can hear the S's, the T's, the C's are all really sharp and really pronounced. And we need to tame those, okay? Now, first thing I'm going to do, as you probably would do yourself, is go to your DS. So let's switch that on. And what I've done here, I've just used uh, the template, the uh, female vocal wide band um, template and slap that on there. Let's have a listen to that now. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me, tell me. You can always spend some time and the answer we will find, you can always tell me, tell me. Okay, cool. So, Instantly, you can hear the um, effect that the DSA is having on the S's in particular. However, I'm not happy with the harshness of the T's still. So I'm going to show you another technique that you can use to actually address those T's. You can use the same technique for any harsh consonant sounds or sibilant sounds within your recording. But I'm focusing in particular on the T's and one or two S's. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this vocal track, all right? So I'll use the shortcut Command D to duplicate the track. Okay, cool. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to duplicate the vocal section as well. Okay, so I have an, an exact copy of, of the vocal. So click, option, drag, drop. Now, as you can see, it's uh, this copy is sliding out of position. If I press the shift key at the same time, it will lock back in. Boom, there you go. So there's another technique there for you. Now I release and I have an exact duplicate. Cool. Now what I want to do, I want to actually take all of this um, stuff off the um, channel. So I'm going to reset channel strip here, reset channel strip. There we are. Okay, now this next step is very important. Pay attention. Make sure you set the output of your channel to 
no output. Okay, that's important. The other thing we're going to do just to keep things nice and tidy, we're going to call this Vox SC. So we're going to call it Vox Sidechain. We're also going to color code this so that there's a clear distinction between the two. Uh, use a key command, Option C, to pull up your color palette. And now we're going to select our region and we're going to choose a random color to change the color so we can distinguish between the two of these. So I'll click that. Ah, here we go. Both regions have changed color. Now, as you can see, only one was selected. Let's undo that and I'll show you that again. Click on this, only this is selected. I'm changing it to this and both are changing. Now, that's because this is kind of an alias of this. It's not a new region. So we need to address that real quick. Um, I'm gonna uh, Command Z again to undo. I'm gonna click on this one. We're gonna go to Edit. We're gonna go to uh, convert and convert to new region, not new audio file, just new region. So there's a distinction now between this and this. And now when I click on here, click that, right, that's changed and this one remains intact. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's one of those niggly things that happen that you, you get a little bit stuck with because you're, you're, you're confused as to why is this one changing when this one um, is the one you want to change, then that's how you fix that. Okay, moving on. So what we've done so far, let's let's just recap. We have duplicated the track. We've duplicated the audio region that we're working on. We've set the uh, channel strip to no output. We've also color coded and named the new piece of audio um, that we're going to be working on um, as Vox sidechain. You can name it what you want, but just try to keep them separate so you know what's going on. The next thing you want to do is come to come back to your main vocal, which is right here, and insert a compressor. Let's go to stereo compressor. Okay. Now the circuit I've chosen is the universal audio circuit that I really like using for this type of work. Um, you can see a video as well where I break down the different um, compressor circuit types. And a lot of these circuit types are emulations of classic compressors, okay? And this is the thing I want you to check out. Something that is often unused. If we were to click here, sidechain, now this panel changes. Let's go back to our output. Okay, this way I normally add a bit of distortion to color the sound. However, I'm adding sidechain here. Now, now I'm gonna flip back to my other compressor. So we've got our settings there. Let's take this off. Let's just go back in here, switch this on, and this is all set up now. Now the way I've got this set up is I've got the um, detection is on max. The filter I've got switched on because I wanna benefit from these settings right here. I want the compressor to listen out for peaks in volume around this sort of frequency. I need to, I've set it to parametric EQ. So we're using a bell or peak EQ. Uh, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. By setting the mode to parametric EQ, we're using this type of EQ. Again, I've got a video which really breaks things down in terms of EQ. You should see a link on the screen and you can check that one out, okay? So we're using bell or peak EQ, right. Now the other thing that we need to do is we need to come up here to sidechain and we need to go to Vox um, SC. So now this compressor will only start firing when it receives an input from Vox SC, okay? Now there's still a bit more to do, but uh, this is just to break it down for those of you who haven't used sidechain uh, much in your um, production or in your engineering. Um, the compressor will only trigger when it receives an input from Vox SC or Vox sidechain. So we're gonna close that off for a minute and we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so the next bit is a bit time consuming, but believe me, it'd be worthwhile in the end. Okay, so let me just solo this vocal once again. And don't forget, this is a copy of this. I'm just gonna click on this. And we're just looking at what's happening where these peaks occur, these little spikes, okay? And 
believe me, these are where the sibilant sounds are occurring. Take these off, actually. Oops, take that off. Take, just take all of those effects off. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me, tell me. Um, exactly as I said, um, where these peaks are occurring. These are your S's, your T's, your C's, really cutting through, but they're far too harsh. Now, down here, we've got the same thing. And what I'm gonna do here is because I know these are the offending areas, I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do an edit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with this one right here and we can be brutal. I'm just gonna go in there, Command T to split and delete. Go to that, Command T, split. I'm gonna come, let's, let's take the loop off. Let's play through. Something on your mind and it's getting. Right, it's this one right here, it's a bit harsh there. So I'm gonna cut here, delete this bit. And I'm just gonna, yeah, this, this should do here. Um, and I'm gonna go along, I'll just do a few more and then you'll get the idea, yeah, I'm sure you get the idea. Getting you down. Right, this one right here. Okay, let's just zoom in a touch. And go to about there, cut there. Um, and I'm going to delete that, okay. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna do this edit real quick and you'll see what the end result is. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so what I've done is I've reset the compressor to its default setting for this particular circuit. I've set up um, this side of the side chain operations to what I want, parametric EQ, this frequency right here, switching the filter on and detection is on max, okay? This, so this bit here is as it was before, but I've reset this panel just by hitting uh, going back to uh, factory default. A few things to bear in mind. What I'd say to you is auto gain, switch that off. You want to be able to determine the gain yourself. Okay, so switch the auto gain off. Also switch the release from auto so you have control over the release time. Okay, also I want a quick attack and a slow release. Okay, let's put all of the other effects on, switch those on. I'm gonna switch the DSR on because that's doing a big part of the job already, but I just want the side chain compression to handle the T's and some of those S's that are jumping out, okay? So let's play back and we'll set the rest of these parameters. Also remember, this is gonna be different for every song, okay? So let's go. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me. Right, so I've pushed the release time all the way up to maximum. So you can actually hear how long it takes for the compressor to release after the signal drops back down below the threshold. So you don't want a crazy release time like this. Let's start off around 30 milliseconds. Let's try there. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me. We're getting about 10 dB of gain reduction. If there's something on your right. Now you want you might want that or you might want less, so I'm gonna set the threshold a bit higher. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me, tell me. We can always spend some time and the answer we will find. So you're hearing a little bit of pumping there, and that's to do with the, the settings here. Let me just drop the ratio down to about Let's try 2.5 to 1. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always tell me, tell me. That will work for me, actually. Once the music is playing, all we are pulling down is where these spikes occur. So if we were to just try and imagine uh, from the peak here, to around maybe about this section right here if I'm what I'm pointing to. When the playhead passes over this, we wanna dip the volume down by maybe three or four, maybe five dB. That's what's actually happening, okay? If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you can always 
And I'll keep tuning it until I get the result I want. The principle is what I'm trying to show you here. The amount of pumping you'll get is determined by your attack and your release time. So if you, if I was just to back this off, maybe to 20 milliseconds now, let's try that. If there's something on your mind and it's getting you down, you Now that's a lot more transparent. Let's bring the music in and let's see how that blends in with the music. So much better. Those T's, especially the T's and the C, there's a can along here. You let's play that. That C, that can was jumping out before. It was a lot more harsh, and now I've been able to tame that. And let's go back to what's actually happening. Let's just see what's actually going on. We're doing a number of things. We've told the compressor to look for peaks within the range of around 7,000 hertz because we've used the parametric EQ. So it's looking for a very narrow band of frequencies that will trigger the compressor, which then reduces the gain of the or the volume of your vocal by X amount of dB. Now the gain reduction is determined by the threshold level and the ratio. How quickly this happens is uh, determined by the attack time. Now I've got a very quick attack. I've got zero milliseconds. So as soon as um, there's detection, this starts working. This seems to work really well. One more pass and then that should be it. Okay, so in this lesson, we've covered something really, really handy. And it's a bit more advanced, but that's how we learn. That's how we stretch ourselves. We try new things and see if they work for you, then wonderful. Okay, now there's a whole lot more that I've got on this channel, which I'm sure will benefit you if you check it out. Also, do remember to follow me on the other social media platforms and check out my content on my website, doosbeats.com. It's always great hearing from you. So do drop me a line, send me some feedback, like, subscribe to the channel, and just like the rest of the MTTC squad, remember to switch on your notification bell so when my next video drops, you'll find out straight away. Looking forward to catching up with you again real soon. I'm Dr. Deuce, peace. <laughs>